So as we have seen, quantitative methods such as questionnaires and surveys are quite useful in helping us find out about general conditions in the world. They help us find out about facts and frequencies from populations at large scales, asking general questions with limited response categories. However, these quantitative methods are less useful in getting to the specifics of individual situations. So if surveys offer the bird's eye view, or perhaps even a detached satellite style view of the world, they're not very good at finding out about the lives from the perspectives of humans, the level at, we, level at which we actually live. So in order to get more of a human's eye view rather than perhaps a bird's eye view, social researchers choose to use qualitative methods. As Van Manen describes, qualitative methods is an umbrella term covering an array of interpretive techniques which seek to describe, decode, translate and otherwise come to terms with the meaning rather than the frequency of certain more or less naturally occurring phenomena in the social world. Qualitative methods are therefore not interested in frequencies and statistical facts. They don't want to know about human life from a distance, but they want to know human life, what it's like up close and personal. They want to find out about the meanings and the interpretations that individuals hold about the world. In other words, qualitative methods help us find out what facts and frequencies actually mean for people, what significance they actually have for those living them out. Knowing how much income someone earns, or what religious they practice, or what housing type they live in is all very well, but we also need to know about how important their income is, or the lack of income is, to them. How important is their religion? We need the explanation and the interpretation. We are no longer interested in the frequency, but the meaning of these experiences. As Grills tells us, qualitative researchers are often interested in developing an understanding of the perspective of the other, because social ideas, languages, actions, symbols, physical objects, income, gods, etc., they, because they lack any inherent meaning, the researcher needs to understand how individual people actually view these things for them. So qualitative methods are the type of method that we can use to access people's attitudes and responses to the places around them, whatever they may be. As Hakim tells us, qualitative research is concerned with individuals' own accounts of their attitudes, their motivations, their behaviour. It offers richly descriptive reports of individuals' perceptions, attitudes, beliefs, views and feelings, the meanings and interpretations given to events and things, as well as their behaviour. Displaying how these, are, these meanings and interpretations are put together more or less coherently into frameworks that make sense to illuminate the motivations, connecting attitude with behaviour and determining the particular decisions individual makes in their everyday lives. So qualitative research is concerned therefore with individuals own accounts of behaviour and motivations. It's interested in words, talk, the opinions of people. Qualitative researchers believe that such rich, long, elongated descriptions of the social world are valuable. Qualitative methods therefore offer access to meanings, beliefs and attitudes of individuals and groups. They can be effective at accessing thought through interpretations and representations of the world through methods like interviews. They can also give insight into everyday or impulsive interactions through methods such as ethnography, as well as interpreting signs, images and symbols. And we'll look at all these different methods in later podcasts. So qualitative research offers access to knowledge and understanding at a human scale. It's interested in individuals and the way they respond to external social realities at this human level. These methods therefore are very different to scientific methodologies embodied by the survey approach. Qualitative and quantitative methods are motivated by different questions and require different sorts of data. There is inherently no absolutely right or wrong type of methods in many cases, most research projects might use both, but it's vital to choose the correct method in line with the type of knowledge that you're interested in. For example, if your work is based at the national scale, quantitative surveys allow you to get facts and frequencies at that level, 
which is particularly important perhaps if you want to make national level policy. But if we want to know what the world is like for a particular group in a particular place, in perhaps a rural area or a particular, a particular urban neighbourhood, then more qualitative methods may be important. So you have to make sure that the method you choose marries up with your research questions. You need to couple up the right questions with the right methods to produce the right form of data. So as we've seen from the last two podcasts, there are two main choices of methods we might use to operationalise our research. Quantitative methods and qualitative methods. Each method presupposes a, a particular type of information or data that we want to collect through our research project. Quantitative methods might be orientated more generally around large samples, might provoke a more general or bird's eye view interest on the world, and approach that data and, that, and the analysis of that data from a more scientific perspective, looking for facts and frequencies, often using statistics and numbers. On the other hand, qualitative methods aren't interested in data in the same way. They're interested in a more specific level of information, a more social scientific understanding, which is more orientated around sm more small studies rather than on large scales, and focus more on words, images, texts and ideas, the meanings rather than the frequencies of social life. If we want to put more, these more qualitative methods into practice, we next need to consider the positionality that we take into, in relation to our research. And this issue of researcher positionality we're going to look at in the next podcast.